Okay, great. My next guest is a self-professed foodie whose idea of a perfect night is curling up with a pile of cooking magazines. So when she discovered her kids had food allergies and she couldn't find recipes that were safe for them, she decided to take matters into her own hands, right? I did. And, I and uh, Sibyl uh, Pascal has written a second book called The Allergen-Free Baker's Handbook. Please welcome her back to the show. So, so when we saw the book, we went through it and... And I find it so difficult to believe that you can make a crumb cake that's allergen-free. No eggs, no butter, no cream, no, um, I mean, so many things. No flour. No wheat, exactly. No, no wheat. flour. Right. No, no wheat as we, no flour as Who we know it. it. Who would have thunk it? Right. Sibel thunk it. And her children are thriving. And uh, can they eat all of those? Absolutely. They can, they can eat all 100 recipes in this book. As... I meant, could they eat the whole pile? Oh, they do. Yes. On a regular basis, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, so let's get started making this crumb cake. This, this is... is a classic crumb cake recipe, okay. and I'm so excited to tell you guys about it, to walk you through. But I'm going to start by uh, showing you my secret weapon with allergen-free baking. It's my basic gluten-free flour mix. And you, what you do is you mix up super fine brown rice flour tapioca starch and, t and uh, potato starch. And, and that's your flour. And that's my flour. And yeah. you just mix it up, you shake so it up you in the bag. just don't even think about using regular exactly. wheat flour anymore. And this right. mimics all-purpose flour beautifully. Right. So you eat all the stuff that you feed your kids. You don't have any I allergies? Do. No, actually, I do. Oh, do. I have tree nut allergies, shellfish allergies, oh. mild wheat allergy. Oh. Don't get me started. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I'm going to have you start by, by mixing up the uh, dry ingredients okay, so for the Okay, so two cups of gluten-free flour mix. This mix. This mix. Keep it we'll in your put fridge. put this on our website, right? Can we Absolutely. put it on? Absolutely. Okay. So you just keep that in your fridge and one, you have it on, on, on uh, hand at okay. all times. One teaspoon. One teaspoon double-acting baking powder. Now, nobody's allergic to that? Not that I know of. Okay. One teaspoon of baking soda. And nobody's this, allergic to not that. Not that I know of. Okay. Not one of the top eight allergens. Okay. This is a half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. This is a vegetable gum that's very important for creating structure in your gluten-free baked goods. Oh, okay. And a teaspoon of just plain old uh, table salt or very fine sea salt. And, and the kids can eat salt. They can. So okay. while you're doing that, while you whisk that up, I'm going to start um, creaming our... This is a dairy-free, soy-free vegetable shortening with palm oil. This is your favorite. This is my favorite. I think okay. it has the most okay. consistent results. Spectrum. Great in place of butter. Or and you buy that or, at the Whole Foods store? I buy this at Whole Foods. You can buy all of these ingredients oh. at Whole Foods, oh, um, your, your local health food store, or you can get them online at Amazon for the most so, part. And now eggs, do you miss eggs? I don't miss eggs. Are the children allergic to eggs? They have. A, my son Lennon has a mild egg allergy, so... We stay away from that as well. So we're going to, actually, we're going to wait. Um, I'm going to have you mix up our energy egg replacer. That's this, and this is in place of eggs. Oh, okay. So turn that off for now. And what you're going to add is uh, one tablespoon of this energy egg replacer to a quarter cup of rice oh. milk, which I love rice milk. It's a very neutral Yeah, um, I, I drink substitute. rice milk. I like it. You could whisk that up okay. until it's nice and frothy. Um, and add it to this bowl, and we're going to mix this on medium speed for about two minutes, and then one teaspoon of the vanilla as and well. And vanilla is not an allergen. Not if it's uh, gluten-free vanilla, okay. which this is. Oh. While you're doing that, while you're going to mix that on medium speed, I am going to make our substitute for sour cream. Now this is coffee cake, right? So this is we want that nice, moist richness. So I'm making a dairy-free alternative to sour cream. So you came up with all these recipes I on did. your own. I'm kind of like this mad you're, scientist. Yeah, you're a mad chemist. I'm a mad chemist in the kitchen coming up with allergen-free substitutions for traditional ingredients. Do I start adding flour? Not yet. Not yet. Next, we are going to alternately add, let's turn that up a little bit, uh, the dry ingredients and our mock sour cream. We're going we're gonna to add it in three batches. We're going to start with the dry and end with the dry. So if you add a little more of that on there. Okay. Oops. It's okay. It all goes to the same place. So this is just one of a hundred completely allergen-free recipes in this book. Um, they're also vegan, but they're also taste tested not only by my kids and my entire neighborhood, but by, by many people without food allergies, many people who are not gluten intolerant and uh, have you passed can, the test. Just throw that all in. So while you finish mixing that up, I'm going to go down here and make our crumb topping. And once yeah, you're done with that, I'd love to know the crumb topping. Once you finish that, you can spread it in our nine by nine pan. Um, so to make up the crumb topping, again, I'm using my secret weapon, basic gluten-free flour mix, and I am adding a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, 
another quarter teaspoon of this fantastic xanthan gum that again it, it looks like a good it looks like a good uh, mix and smell that yes. this is this was made with a good. vegan uh, yogurt which is made with coconut milk you could also use a rice milk yogurt so I'm mixing in the cinnamon the xanthan now, gum soy is not part of the there's no soy oh. in this this is because free of all are... top out because okay that Everybody's... is a quarter teaspoon salt this is a half a cup of light brown sugar, which I like because it has that lovely um, golden color. Stirring so, that up. Okay, so you can use sugar. Yes, in this recipe. I'm just making a nice crumb here. You're gonna spread that, smooth it down. Okay. So, almost done with that. Now my daughter's one. a vegan and she's, but she hasn't gotten into this kind of baking. She bakes the real thing and gives it all away. She does, she bakes Alexis. with eggs. She bakes, oh yeah, with everything and she just gives it away. She never tastes it. Well, have, has she tried using any kind of alternative ingredients? No, she hasn't, for, but I'm giving her the book. You, it's because it's actually quite fun, and yeah. you realize that there are so many things on the market right now that you can use in, I mean, that's one of the lovely things about, that I learned through, through creating this book, is how many fantastic substitutions there are. There, as I said, you can use the, the coconut milk yogurt or the rice milk yogurt right. in place of cream or in place of sour cream. Uh, I came up with a version of buttermilk by using rice milk and I sour it with vinegar. cider vinegar yes. or with lemon juice. That's and then you have mock buttermilk. Yeah, that's how I make my buttermilk. So here we have a pea-sized crumb. And we are just going to smooth that down and then sprinkle this on the top. Mm. Now, I asked you last time I was on if you had any food, food allergies. And I think you were told me that you had had a reaction to lobsters. Yeah, back but in then the I, day. Went, I went and got tested and they found... No sensitivity to anything, well, even though you were one of the lucky few. Yeah, but now, but now I'm, who knows, you know, you never know. Well, 25 million Americans suffer from food allergies, yes. and there are millions more with uh, gluten intolerance and celiac disease. No, and that, yeah, that doesn't mean that you're not intolerant. You can be non-allergic and intolerant, right? right? Absolutely. Yes. You can have a reaction without right. having an immune system response That's to food. That's right. You, yeah. know, it can, uh, it, you just, maybe you don't have the you, enzymes to digest. You bloat or you get fat exactly. by mis, you know, because or you, you're eating something that doesn't agree with you. Okay, so let's just yeah. sprinkle this on top. And you're going to put this, um, once we've done this, we're going to bake it uh, at 325 for about 45 minutes. That until, makes a nice crumb. Isn't it lovely? Yeah. And it tastes good. So mm. there you have it. Oh, you're going to use you all have of that. it. I am. I'm going to use all of it. <laughs> Bake that and here it is. Here it is. This is the finished product. After 45 minutes, you're just going to you're going to sift a little bit of this powdered sugar mm. and we are going to cut it up into 12 pieces. Oh, 12 or pieces. Or however many you want. Make them big. We can each have a quarter for all right. And there you have it. Allergen-free, gluten-free, and, and vegan. thanks to Ten Speed Press, everyone in our studio audience is taking home a copy of Sibyl's book, The Allergen-Free Baker's <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm back with Sabelle Piscal, who wrote the Allergen-Free Baker's Handbook. She has a few tricks up both sleeves for substituting some common ingredients. So milk. Yes, milk. Yes. Key ingredient that we need to substitute. Uh, this is cow's milk. So in place of cow's milk, when you're doing allergen-free baking, I prefer rice milk. It has the most neutral flavor. But you could also use hemp milk, which is high mm. in protein and very nutritious. This is Re peanut butter. Regular old peanut Regular butter. old peanut butter, which is one of the most common allergies. So in place of peanut butter mm. and, and nut butters, like yeah. almond butter, I use sunflower seed butter, also oh. known as sun butter. And this is a fantastic substitute. And it's high in protein mm, so and vitamin good. E. It's delicious. It and it bakes well. Yeah. In place of eggs, there are quite a few uh, ways to, to um, swap them out. I like to use uh, applesauce. A quarter cup of applesauce is equivalent oh. to one egg that provides moistness and structure. Okay. Uh, this is a fantastic old World War II trick. When they rationed eggs, you would add um, a teaspoon of baking soda to your dry ingredients and a teaspoon of cider vinegar to your wet ingredients, and when they combine, it creates that, that rise, right. that sort of explosion. Right. Great substitute for eggs. Okay, so and all these eggs get thrown away. Exactly, for now. <laughs> and the last one I have here is what we call flax eggs. And flax, mm. you grind up your flax seed or you, um, you, make, you buy flaxseed meal. And we combine a tablespoon of flaxseed meal with three tablespoons of hot water. And you whip it up and it becomes uh, just like an egg in oh, terms look. of its texture. It it's yeah. sort of goopy and egg-like. 
So what we have here is one cookie sure. that is made with flax eggs and one cookie that is made with real eggs. And I don't know which is which. And Joey. we're going to have Joey, Hi. our friend Joey, come do a All taste right. test, a blind taste Try test. Try that. I'm allergic to um, raisins. I'm allergic to xanthan gum. There's no xanthan gum. No, no, gum. no, I'm teasing. There's I mean, no xanthan gum. I love xanthans. Okay, I'm going to try two. So that's okay. B. Mm, okay. Okay. Good. And good. Good cooking. Put that on this side. Mm. <laughs> ah, let's move it over. Mm -hmm. Can you tell which yeah, one was made? I don't made? like this one. I like this one better. You like B. Yes. B is flaxseed meal. <laughs> wow. Very good. Thank you. And there you have it. Allergen free.